Buonasera a tutti, good evening and welcome to the Italian Radio Hour. Io sono Viviana and I would like to welcome back our regular listeners and also welcome any new listeners. Also be sure to like us on Instagram and Facebook at the Italian Radio Hour and subscribe to our YouTube channel to catch up on any past video interviews. Vorrei dare il benvenuto ai nostri ascoltatori da tutto il mondo, grazie per essere con noi anche oggi mentre continuiamo il nostro viaggio per l'Italia e la cultura italiana. So typically our programs are about Italy and uh, trips to Italy and today we're going to talk about journeys to Italy and what um, the different experiences of Italianità um, mean to different people uh, that have uh, whose stories have been captured in a beautiful book that is called Italy is out and also um, in, uh, for this uh, journey that will, uh, um, personal, I would say, uh, journey that we're going to get on today, we're actually connecting um, from with three uh, geographical areas. So we're starting with uh, uh, Palermo, where uh, Mario Badagliacca, and, uh, and then with Derek Duncan in Edinburgh, Scotland, um, and they're joined by Eddie Junta in New Jersey and I in Pittsburgh. We will be talking again about this beautiful book, but I see it as a journey uh, that documents uh, the Italianità of uh, many of us who have left Italy. But before bringing our guests, a little publicità. Parli italiano? Do you want to learn, improve, or master your Italian? Istituto Mondo Italiano can help. Located in the heart of Region Square, Mondo Italiano offers small group classes and one-on-one private tutoring to help you learn Italian in no time. Visit us online at www.istitutomondoitaliano.org. Okay, so welcome to the program. Benvenuti a tutti quanti, Mario, Derek, uh, Eddie. It's so great to see you again and to meet Mario and, and, and Derek for the first time. How are you today? Great. Oh, great, thanks. So um, I, um, I would like for you actually to share a little bit about uh, your uh, background and uh, uh, who you are, because each one of you are indeed, a, um, you know, Mario and Derek, the masterminds behind the, the volume, uh, Eddie, whose uh, story is also um, featured. Uh, but a little bit about your background and the work you might have done previously and in which discipline you might have documented the journey of Italians, um, migrants, uh, the Italian diaspora and so forth. So let's get with uh, uh, Mario. Um, iniziamo da te. Io sono fotografo da ormai dieci anni, mi occupo principalmente di migrazioni. E, um, ho iniziato appunto dieci anni fa documentando attraverso il reportage e la fotografia documentaria le migrazioni in Italia e in Europa attraverso i confini europei o del Mediterraneo e, um, e nel, dal 2016 ho iniziato anche a occuparmi di eh, emigrazioni italiane eh, proprio appunto con eh, il lavoro che è stato sviluppato per il libro, per Italy's Out e eh, quindi principalmente i miei temi eh, di riferimento sono questi migrazioni, violazioni dei diritti umani e confini Ok, so um, just uh, to give a summary of uh, uh, Mario's background who has been working in this field for over 10 years uh, documenting uh, migration so whether it's documentaries or he's a photographer or uh, photography um, in in Italy and uh, in uh, in Europe and then uh, the Mediterranean um, overall and then since 2016 he has been focusing on uh, the Italian immigration and um that eventually led also to the publication of the book Italy's Out. So his, uh, his uh, three years of concentration or migration violation of uh, human rights and uh, borders. Uh, grazie, grazie Mario. Uh, Derek? Um, I'm professor of Italian at uh, St. Andrews in Scotland. And um, for some years now I've been working on, I've been looking at uh, recent uh, migration to Italy uh, through film and through literature. But it was really the collaboration with Mario a few years ago that started me thinking about Italian emigration 
uh, of which, you know, this book is part of a, a, a wider project. And more recently, I've been looking at Italian emigration to the United Kingdom, particularly to Scotland, which has been going on since the late 19th century. It's got some quite you know interesting and particular characteristics. So we can maybe come back and talk about that in a bit later. Absolutely. Just to also create the comparisons or maybe similarities among the experiences. And uh, Eddie, uh, as I said before, you're kind of the magnet of many connections. And uh, I have to say something about, uh, well, let me uh, um, let me have Eddie introduce herself first for those who might not know her yet. But she uh, she's she's a wonderful not, not even uh, not just in academia, a person that everyone highly respects, but a, a great human being. And, and we were uh, privileged to have her on the um, podcast before. Then through her work, uh, we talked about also the uh, the um, um, factory fire, the triangle factory fire in New York and uh, um, Tina, my fear soldier. And now we're back to you, um, Eddie. So Eddie, just... Um, Something about um, uh, something about you. Well, it's wonderful to be in conversation with you again, and thank you for creating this fantastic space for for connecting. These these conversations are are so vital, um, especially for those of us who are scattered in different eateries uh, across the world. It's only recently that I realized that I can no longer call myself uh, a recent. Uh, um, immigrant uh, because I left Italy 40 years ago and I've been so attached to my identity as a recent immigrant uh, but um, I'm not mm -hmm. and there is a there is a kind of uh, a painful letting go of this identity that that leaves me um, psychically displaced because I don't feel fully grounded in a different kind of cultural terrain even as I've been living in the United States now for four, almost 40 years. Um, so that, that is what has been on my mind. In any case, since I have been uh, in the United States where I came to study, um, my primary focus of my scholarly work uh, was Italian-American studies, especially um, women. And, um, and then in later years, I became very interested in, uh, in memory work. I teach I teach memoir, and um, my most recent work has been on the Triangle Fire, something that I've also been interested in for a very long time. So just uh, my uh, how I got to Ilis out, and sometimes timing plays always a key role. Um, I was actually in Italy uh, last summer, and I was about to return to the US where I came across, it was either in or it was something that really, um, got me interested in the publication, but unfortunately the delivery timeframes would not have met my departure the following day. So I usually, when I'm in Italy, I have um, in my room a list of books that uh, I'm going to order when, you know, I'm I'm there. And so obviously I jotted down um, um, yours. And um, so when I got to Rome um, this, uh, this uh, summer, um, it was first on the list. So I ordered it and I was so excited when I got the book. Uh, but then uh, there is something that needed to happen, I guess, in also in my own personal life. And it kind of ties to what Eddie said before, the awareness that our stage, um, our place of this journey, because it's not, you know, moving to the US, Scotland, or wherever uh, it might be. It's not a destination, it's a journey. And it continues to flow, whether we realize it or not. But December 17 of this year, I'm going to celebrate my 30th anniversary since I first landed at Pittsburgh International Airport. And when I first came, I met, I was in my early 20s because it was um, right after college. I met people that have been here 30, 40 years. And I would look at them like, with distance, you know, I could not relate to that experience. Now that I'm in many groups that facilitate the acclimation of um, families, Italian families, women uh, trying to reinvent themselves, I still feel that I'm part of them as if I just got here, but I don't think that's how they see me. <laughs> that's a little, um, and um, 
so that is, you know, my uh, my own personal journey um, got me to approach Italy's out with a different awareness. And then when I opened the pages um, and uh, recognized the two people that I had great respect for, one being Eddie, and then uh, La Lucy Caliparo that we had on 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 the program as well with uh, um, uh, Tracciando Fili del Passato, tracing threads of the past. And I was like, that was a trifecta. So, um, as I said, it's uh, it's something that. Um, I'm happy that I got to enjoy even more this summer. But now this is my experience and I have you guys on <laughs> listening to that, but I'm really um, going to start with the questions. So I would like to start with uh, uh, Mario, but again, Derek, this is, this is your joint uh, 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 baby. Where does this uh, project uh, come from? Um, and uh, as Derek indicated, it was uh, a three-year project, I believe. So um, tell us a little bit about the birth of this baby, <laughs> the birth of this beautiful project. Mario, do you want to go first? Sì. Um, allora, il progetto è nato all'interno di un enorme proge progetto di ricerca del quale vi parlerà uh, dopo Derek. Eh, io ho già collaborato con Derek nel 2014, lui mi aveva invitato a Sant'Andrius durante il, il Bing Human Festival eh, per una mostra, portare in mostra un lavoro che avevo fatto nel 2013 13 sui centri di identificazione ed espulsione per migranti e due anni dopo nel 2016 eh, Derek mi ha proposto di partecipare come artist in residence per il progetto Transnationalizing Modern Language per sviluppare eh, fotograficamente visualmente eh, il concetto l'idea di italianità eh, tra gli italiani che vivono all'estero e, lì abbiamo insomma stabilito i luoghi nei quali avrei dovuto sviluppare il lavoro e che sono stati in Inghilterra, Stati Uniti e in Argentina e poi in una seconda fase io ho anche inserito Tunisia ed Etiopia e da lì insomma è nata questa collaborazione con eh, il TML che è stato insomma molto più che una semplice artist in residence perché ho avuto modo di confrontarmi con tutti i ricercatori che erano coinvolti nel progetto eh, è un attimo che traduco <ride> so, uh, uh, so this, uh, this uh, uh, Italy's Out is um, uh, part of a much much uh, broader um, research uh, project um, um, back in 2014 Derek had uh, already invited uh, Mario to, uh, to San uh, Andrews uh, College to uh, participate in a um, in, a, um, in an event where he would um, share his uh, photographic um, um, expert, no more than uh, his uh, uh, photography about uh, migrant uh, centers, a project that he had documented back in 2013. And then in 2014, um, uh, Derek invited Mario as a artist in residence and uh, again, to continue to document whether in a visual way, uh, the experience of the Italians living um, abroad. So initially the, the project uh, um, included uh, three different geographical areas. Uh, that was England, uh, US and Argentina. In a second phase, um, Tunisia and Ethiopia were added. And this uh, collaboration with um, the uh, transnational uh, TML with uh, transnational modern languages uh, has, uh, has given uh, Mario the ability to um, confront himself with, uh, he, with all other researchers um, in, in the field. Okay. Um, prego Mario. E quindi insomma il progetto insomma, è nato da questo, poi abbiamo continuato a collaborare perché 
e insomma, sono state organizzate delle mostre, degli eventi all'interno di tutte le conferenze del progetto, quindi insomma, è stata una collaborazione mh, lunga eh, che insomma, è durata quattro anni e nella quale appunto sono stato incluso oltre la fotografia perché ho avuto modo anche di assistere e partecipare alle mh, conferenze e entrare pienamente dentro il progetto di ricerca dal mio punto di vista che è quello fotografico ok so again this uh, the collaboration that has been going on um, um, just reached also kind of additional dimensions because uh, with uh, the presentation of uh, or conferences about the project there were also exhibits and other uh, events that were organized so this has been Um, you know, a, a very healthy and proliferous uh, uh, collaboration between uh, the two um, that has gone way beyond the uh, photographic uh, contribution um, of, uh, of Mario. So, Derek, um, when you um, contacted Mario um, initially, maybe this is, again, can be a question for both of you. And... Um, you had already a full scope of the project or eventually the, the project got even bigger in what you had already anticipated? Um, yeah, the project kept getting bigger and bigger as we went on. I think that's a really important thing to stress. Um, I met Mario, um, not exactly by chance, but before the project started in Rome, when he was affiliated with Archivio Memori Migranti, mm -hmm. and I was sort of working with them too. And Right from the start, I realized that Mario was someone that I might want to work with. And, you know, this idea of connection was very strong. So in some respects, at the start, it was about finding ways to collaborate with Mario, doing my academic research, but involving him as a photographer. Um, so when this big project started, which was really about... Um, looking at Italian migration from the late 19th century to the present day, the different ways in which people had found living out their Italianità in different locations. We invited Mario to, to take part in that and to find his own way in, in what we were doing. And, you know, the book that ended up being As Italy Is Out was really Mario's photographic project he devised himself, um, exploring the links that you know different people had with place, with their things, their objects, because that's a really important part of, of the book. And kind of like fitting that into our more kind of conventional academic work and giving us different ways of seeing what we did uh, and understanding the connections that different people who were from Italy, whose families had been from Italy, but who are now living in very different parts of the, the globe, were sort of different but connected at the same time. So Mario's work really visualised that for us. He showed us, literally showed us, uh, the things that we were writing about. So, I mean, um, yeah, it, it, it was a really important collaboration for us. And as Mario said, the, the fact of his involvement in the conferences and the various exhibitions we did was, was fundamental. He was absolutely a full part of our team. Mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, one question for Mario and then I um, Eddie, I want to uh, bring you in as well. So I'm going to be I'm going to be very simplistic. Uh, so Mario that calls you and say there you know I want to have this idea. I want to explore what Italian identity or Italianita means to Italians living um, abroad. Well, if I receive that phone call, I would like scratch my head and say, how do I go about this? So how long, you know, how did you go about, um, uh, you know, creating this project? Because, you know, people think Italy food, okay? Um, uh, and food does have a, a great, um, a great value, not only to talk about traditions and also the historical context of uh, foods and, and the region and everything, or also as a, advancement uh, an emancipation of society but how how did you eventually create that uh, filo conduttore for the project eh, sì dopo aver superato lo stordimento iniziale su, sul tema che mi aveva proposto Derek insomma è abbastanza complesso da sviluppare visualmente 
in realtà poi l'idea è venuta quasi subito eh, utilizzando le chiavi interpretative che ho utilizzato anche per altri lavori una formazione in scienze sociali quindi eh, quello che mi interessava è esplorare da un punto di vista storico eh, cercando di entrare in profondità in quelle potrebbero essere le varie storie delle comunità uh, scelte per il lavoro eh, per capire se c'erano punti di, eh, in comune e anche di rottura tra i vari luoghi eh, e gli strumenti che ho utilizzato sono stati essenzialmente quelli del reportage e della fotografia documentaria la particolarità è che in realtà per approcciare questo lavoro ho, fatto, ho utilizzato una strategia inversa rispetto agli altri, nel senso che generalmente quando si approccia un lavoro di reportage c'è un enorme lavoro di studio prima di partire per capire e conoscere il contesto nel quale si va a lavorare. E con Italy South eh, ho preferito... E sviluppare il lavoro non studiando molto perché spesso avere troppa conoscenza e troppe informazioni eh, rendono molto più complesso il processo creativo e quindi sono partito da semplici domande appunto legate a, a, essenzialmente appunto a quelli che erano i punti di rottura di continuità tra le varie generazioni in questi luoghi eh, pur sapendo che ovviamente ogni, erano contesti differenti e che comunque ehm, le, le storie di queste comunità sono fortemente influenzate dal luogo in cui vivono che ha, ha peculiarità particolari quindi okay. sì un attimo trigger probably Uh, many different uh, thoughts about uh, also the complexity of the theme and, and the project. Um, Mario actually uh, rather quickly developed uh, what it would have uh, been the approach, uh, the, the way that he was going to interpret the scope of this, uh, this project, because uh, also utilizing his background in uh, uh, social science, And uh, so he wanted to, you know, to focus on the uh, history of these communities and to understand what could be the connections or maybe the differences, um, um, you know, uh, between the different places where uh, that the project would have uh, touched. And uh, by using then the reportage uh, uh, photography and, and so forth. So And he did it with a unique strategy, or at least a, um, something a little unique about it, um, using an invert, a inverse uh, strategy. Um, typically, when you approach a project of this uh, scope, uh, you might be doing a lot of studying and research beforehand. And um, this, uh, in, uh, in this project, Mario wanted to use the opposite. He wanted to... Um, have less of that uh, knowledge and really, because sometimes all that knowledge could maybe hinder the creative process and uh, wanted to really focus on the questions he was going to, uh, simple questions he was going to um, ask uh, to indeed document either the words, whether there was a breakage or continuity connection uh, with uh, the communities. Um, Uh, of Italians living uh, abroad. And um, I think that's all I, <laughs> that's all I wrote down. Uh, do you want to add something else or would you like Derek to add something else to that? Eh, sì, no, so, concludo dicendo che appunto poi nello sviluppare il lavoro e ho cercato di andare in profondità a, attraverso le persone coinvolte, quindi sviluppando dei, dei ritratti, e, e per raggiungere un livello più intimo ed entrare di più nelle storie delle personali, ehm, ho chiesto ai, alle persone coinvolte di mostrarmi tre oggetti legati al loro rapporto con la cultura italiana, con le proprie origini e con la propria famiglia. E forse questa è la parte più curiosa dell'intero lavoro. 
So in order to uh, develop a deeper connection with the people that were connected um, with uh, this uh, in this uh, project, in order to kind of develop a portrait of the um, individuals um, that are featured in uh, in the whose stories are featured in the book. Um, and really uh, get a deeper connection. Uh, uh, Mario had asked um, the uh, individuals to have three objects uh, that um, um, represented to them um, that had a link to their origin, to their family, um, and and so forth. And that's maybe you know kind of the visual. Uh, also, when you go through the stories of the individual, you have. Um, indeed, it's very interesting to see also the objects that people have um, um, uh, selected. Um, we're going to go back, but because of that, I really want to bring Eddie uh, in, a, in, a, in the conversation to find out first how um, you got approached, whether maybe you knew Mario, maybe there was a call for, you know, uh, or... Um, how was the connection uh, established between you and the project? Well, if I had to go back uh, to the beginning, I would have to go to how Mario first contacted me. But actually, my memory goes to being sitting around the table and eating. And Peter Covino, who's also one of the subjects, uh, was photographed and was asked to choose um, objects and my sister who's also also lives in my sister, sister Claudia also lives in the United States was there and my husband was not an immigrant though of course his family came from some other place at some point we were we had this long long meal and then we got to work and I think uh, um, to think about intimacy and vulnerability when thinking about this project, this fantastic project that, that Derek and Mario put together is really important. There is a, there is a, it's an invitation to reveal yourself in ways that I must say, I'm still beginning to understand. As I was thinking today of the objects that I chose, first I realized that um, both my sister and I chose records. Mm -hmm. She had Bob Dylan, I had feminist records. She had the passport to the United States. I, being a nostalgic, brought my feminist past. But one of uh, one of the objects I chose was um, was a wooden box that belonged to my maternal great-grandmother. Mm -hmm. And this is an object that is uh, um, very meaningful to me. Uh, my belonged to my mother. My great-grandmother gave it to my mother. And I remember it from my childhood as being this, this mysterious container of all the photographs. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it's a memory box. Um, but it wasn't until actually the program started today that mm -hmm. I realized how much that, um, that box has to do with the immigrant history in my family. My mm -hmm. maternal grandfather emigrated to Argentina in 1924. And then he came back in 1928, according to one story, to marry my grandmother, uh, with whom he had become engaged without actually meeting in person. And mm -hmm. they got married in 1928. And then when it was time to go back to Argentina, uh, my maternal great-grandmother, the owner of the box, said, over my dead body, you can take my daughter back. So that box, uh, in a way, is a container of the possibility of having been born in, in Argentina, which is one of the countries that is in this book. And there is this box now, the box that belonged to a woman who tried to resist immigration. It's in the United States with one of her descendants. So when I chose that box, I didn't think of that. I just thought, well, this is very meaningful to me. And I think this is uh, the power of, uh, um, of work uh, um, that, um, yeah, that's my sister, yes. And those I are can, the- I can get the box. <laughs> and that's the box with the photographs. Uh, the power of, of this kind of work is where, where you open yourself up. And I really appreciate uh, Maria's comments about not overthinking 
And because sometimes when you overthink, you try to, to frame and contain um, the significance of something. When uh, the kind of approach that the book took really gave the possibility, um, not only for the readers, but even for the people who are part of the project to continue to reflect and understand what are some of the layers of meaning that are part of the project. And these meanings also get revealed not just by contemplating your singular contribution, but in, in, in the dialogue, in the conversation that the book has established. Um, which um, the next question is for you, Derek. Uh, so uh, in addition to the geographical areas that they're covered in, in the book, um, you wanted to document uh, this Italianità at three different stages. You had you wanted to have examples of people that were, you know, um, in uh, kind of like three different groups. Um, of uh, mm -hmm. uh, can you explain to us uh, a little bit what these uh, um, kind of groups of were the um, peculiarities of each of the three segments of uh, Italiani uh, that you wanted to document. Sorry, could you say a bit more about that, Viviana? Uh, the... Yeah, so you wanted to kind of have uh, documented three different generations of Italian abroad. Um, so oh, and... sorry, yeah. Um, that was actually something that um, someone in Scotland had mentioned to me about how, in her perspective, she comes from a long line of Italians in Scotland how she'd always felt there were different generations who were not very connected. And I think it kind of ties into what you said about your own experience right at the start of this podcast. Um, there's a historic community in Scotland which really was here before the Second World War and has got a particular sense of being rooted in Scotland with a particular history. Then there's a newer generation which came to the UK. But I mean, I think this is a general um, experience and Lucy Calipari Marcuzzo's family belongs to that moving to Australia in the 1950s, um, still for economic reasons. And then a much more recent generation of um, Italians who in some respects have chosen to move either for study or for work, who've got professional interests. And I think I was just quite fascinated by what kind of connections uh, might bring these people with very different biographic, biographical experiences of the journey and also the idea of the journey, because I think the idea of the journey is as important in some respects as the journey itself, you know, how people think back on what their family did. And I thought what Eddie was saying just now about the, the memory of her grandfather's trip to journey to Argentina then back and then not making it again is really important because all of these family stories have got these little breaks in them and other possible outcomes and I think I just really wanted to look at these three different areas um, not really to, to, to compare them but just kind of like open them up because I think what Eddie and Maria both said about not overthinking is really important here you know just let things open up and, and and see how how they speak to us. Um, yeah, I think also you, you know again we as I was saying before we transition from one maybe from one group to another as uh, we spend more time uh, overseas. Maybe the um, when we thought that we were different from one category because we came privileged on an airplane uh, ticket with. Uh, uh, higher, you know, degrees and so forth, and maybe someone else's experience was different. And we, and now eventually we are still we are cultivating the same nostalgia, mm -hmm. uh, maybe through different instruments or different ways of doing that. That uh, those immigrants that you know um, had when they first came, and uh, maybe was so foreign to us to even understand um, those uh, those uh, um, characteristics. And uh, and then, um, as I said, uh, what I'm going to um, maybe ask uh, Eddie as well, because uh, she, like myself, live on away from uh, from from Italy. Um, do you feel the need to exercise your Italianita? Uh, is there any point maybe it was not that important, or even suppressed it, and then at some point in your life, actually became the the focus or i don't know um took the stage so to speak 
I don't think I have ever um, been able just to put aside uh, um, whatever it means to be Italian. I think initially when I came to the United States, I don't, I don't know if you experienced that, Viviana, but at first I felt European, which I, I had never felt before. Mm -hmm. um, then I felt uh, Italian. Uh, then I started to say, okay, I'm Italian-American. Then I started feeling Sicilian, Sicilian-American. Um, more recently, I become obsessed, or consumed uh, with the thinking and also um, um, writing more deliberately about the hometown of Jela that I left eagerly and willingly uh, when I was 18. So I left even before coming to the United States. Uh, so I think there is, a, you know, we become containers for uh, multiple ways of experiencing cultural identities. And, 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 you know, if anything, over time, it's very hard to differentiate, uh, to differentiate them. It's part of the interact um, with each other and they become shaped uh, um, by, by each other. But what, I want you to say something about nostalgia because nostalgia is such a maligned word that people don't like nostalgia. Uh, it's like, it's so sentimental. Um, um, for me, nostalgia is really important. And I think it's a misunderstood term when it comes, uh, when it comes to the immigrants. Immigrants feel nostalgia, uh, not simply as an, a yearning and a desire to uh, find home, but as a resistance to find home. I think as an, as an, as, as an immigrant, I never want to feel completely at home because you must become comfortable or uncomfortable with this condition of being displaced and that's where a different kind of home emerges and it's one that then contains all these different identities that keep mutating and interacting with each other um it's uh, it's a very uh great uh, observation mario i'm going to ask you one question at a time, but I do have a couple. Um, and again, uh, Derek can uh, chime in um, as well. So um, who went, was it just Mario that went and visit uh, the people uh, featured in the book or was it the whole team? Did you, Derek, uh, participate as well? Eh, no, principalmente uh, sono partito sì, da solo. In alcuni casi in Etiopia e Tunisia mi sono trovato anche a collaborare con alcuni ricercatori del TML che insomma si trovano lì anche in Inghilterra, eh, però sì, principalmente insomma, il lavoro l'ho sviluppato organizzandolo da solo. Okay, so Mario uh, um, actually went on these uh, trips to meet the people featured in the book by himself. And uh, as far as uh, his uh, visits in Ethiopia and Tunisia, he um, also met some of the researchers that, um, that were on site from the uh, TML uh, group, the same thing in, uh, in England as well. Um, is there like a, a specific story or maybe even a couple of stories, some of the, um, I don't know, experience, something that surprised you um, while you were traveling or, um, you know, can you give us an idea of maybe the connections or the, the similarities or the differences between some of the experiences that were so geographically dispersed? Eh, sì, la cosa che mi ha sorpreso di più è che appunto non sono arrivato a una definizione univoca di italianità o di cultura e eh, questo è un, insomma, un punto in comune tra tutti i luoghi, tutte le comunità che ho visitato o, eh, tutti hanno o, delle traiettorie, delle esperienze di vita che non sono mai eh, lineari molti di loro hanno vissuto in più luoghi ad esempio e, e così per il loro rapporto con la cultura italiana è un rapporto continuamente in divenire, in trasformazione utilizzato in base a quelle che sono le loro esperienze anche quotidiane legate al vivere in diaspora, in un altro luogo e anche in relazione con la società, il contesto nel quale stanno 
E, mh, alcuni tratti, ovviamente il, la storia, il contesto politico, sociale dell'Etiopia, della Tunisia sono differenti a quello argentino, degli Stati Uniti o dell'Inghilterra, però mh, diversi tratti in comune venivano, sono mantenuti da tutte le comunità italiane eh, nel, eh, loro, nel creare una loro identità culturale. Eh, basti pensare ad esempio al ruolo della famiglia o il ruolo che può avere la religione o anche lo sport, il calcio a volte eh, quindi il cibo che io volevo scartare fin dall'inizio perché ho paura di cadere in stereotipi legati eh, alla cultura italiana che però in qualche modo è rientrato dalla porta sul retro e, quindi Ci sono dei tratti di italianità che sono comuni a tutti questi luoghi, e pur essendoci ovviamente dei contesti sociali, politici, dei percorsi storici differenti che ovviamente influenzano eh, la vita delle comunità, il modo in cui viene utilizzata poi la cultura. Ok, so, uh, well, the, the, the first thing probably, in, uh, I guess, is the more uh, striking is uh, the conclusion, which <clears throat> I think um, you also mentioned in the book, in the end, what emerged from the lengthy conversations I had with the subjects of the photographs is that, um, oh, no, that's a different one, uh, but that's also the one about uh, uh, migration isn't driven just by clear-cut economic reasons. That was something else I did highlight, um, the one that you say that uh, uh, the conclusion is that we can't really box uh, this uh, Italianità in a cookie cutter uh, type of, uh, of experience. So uh, the conclusion, um, maybe uh, having come to that there isn't really a clear-cut conclusion. Uh, but anyway, um, so, uh, you know, all the experiences that uh, were uh, featured, you know, people lived in different places, had a different uh, uh, rapport or relationship with, uh, uh, you, know, uh, you know, what is also the, the historical and political, you know, Uh, context, uh, like uh, especially in uh, Ethiopia and Tunisia, is very different from what it could be a context in the US, in England, and Argentina. Um, there are, uh, you know, this, uh, even though there are different uh, experiences, there might be some common um, threads uh, among these experiences, such as the wanted, uh, you know, um, uh, to uh, some of the representations of some of the factors such as family or maybe a religion or maybe sport or uh, soccer or food, which was something that Mario didn't want to focus on, not to fall under stereotypes and so forth, but um, the uh, conversation, you know, food kind of went back, came back into the project from the back door. So as I said, just to analyze common traits, but also to contextualize them in the different uh, um, geographical um, areas. Um, okay, uh, so um, I did have another uh, question for, um, for Derek. So, um, By looking at, uh, so you talked a little bit about the experience of the Italians uh, um, in, uh, in, uh, in your region. Um, do you notice that uh, there is a common sense of wanting to come together and create these little Italian enclaves no matter where the Italians move to? Or did you notice that in some, in some experiences people like to be doing just their own thing and they really didn't need to Um, you know, create groups of, uh, I don't know, like-minded uh, people that had similar experiences? Um, I think that's a really great question, actually. Um, one of the things that I didn't know about, but I discovered when I was looking into uh, the Italian presence in, in Britain in the earlier 20th century, was the, the very common practice for Italian to set up local welfare associations or church groups or professional associations. There was a great kind of collectivist spirit. 
And I think that in some ways has kind of like carried on. I mean, in Scotland until very recently, there were still things like an annual Italian picnic when people from all across Scotland, if they could, would gather together in the one place just for a day to have fun and have share food and have sport. Um, I mean, obviously, as time goes on, that becomes more problematic. People move away. There are other demographic changes. But I think there is still a, a pleasure for Italians in the community to come together. And I don't know if it ties into what Eddie was saying about the, in her redefinition of nostalgia, just to kind of like be with other people who don't necessarily feel the same, but feel enough of the same things, connect with somewhere else in another way, which is, is really compelling. Um, one thing I would want to mention as well, the the woman who's on the cover of the book, Antonia Dawes, is one of, I think, of a really, uh, a member of a really unexplored community. It's people who identify with Italy for family reasons, but don't have Italian names, who don't have an Italian family name anymore. And I think that is really fascinating because some of these people can identify very intensely with Italy, feel very Italian, but they're not seen in that way by other people. Um, and that was one thing that I think I'd really like to unpick the layers of meaning. You know, what does it mean not to have that visibility? I don't know if, Eddie, if you've got any thoughts on that. You must have come across a lot of people like that as well, who feel very intensely about Italy, but who are not seen in that way. Yeah, absolutely. I think you know, when I started looking for Italian-American women writers uh, in uh, in the early 1990s, I mean, really I had to go by the name. Um, going in, into bookstores uh, and through works of fiction and nonfiction and physically finding um, the last name. And and I, I think uh, not having an Italian last name becomes as, as a kind of almost obstacle, but at the same time, there are enormous uh, possibilities uh, um, there for uh, um, expressing and elaborating a sense of... Uh, a sense of Italian identity, which is outside the nationalistic, quasi-patriotic, uh, um, community-centered, uh, and you know, nostalgic in the other way uh, sense. Personally, for me, it was very important that my, um, you know, I gave, you know, my my one of my children is uh, is my last name. The other one, she had it for a while, but we never did made the change. Um, but I am acutely aware of how um, um, language uh, is a way to pass on um, some kind of connection. So I think one is the name, but the other one is who speaks the language and who doesn't speak the language. And I know in the United States, uh, um, even in my own field, that there is the sense that if you don't speak Italian, then you are you are not as culturally entitled to to a connection um, uh, to to Italy. It's it's a little bit absurd. <laughs> Let's face it, but it's a very real thing. So I think you know we are at, at, as as we experience at, um, such historical gaps, uh, such linguistic gaps uh, and name gaps. Uh, between the origins and uh, the present times, uh, um, we are really compelled uh, to uh, redefine and to open up the sense of what, what it means to be Italian. And I think we really have to, to, to break it open and to allow different uh, ways of experiencing, which vary dramatically from person to person. Um, this, uh, uh, Derek, uh, the, the book and the conferences um, were predominantly outside Italy or did you have also the opportunity to present the project and the book in Italy? Uh, one of the major conferences was actually in Rome um, and uh, it had speakers who came from all over the world. I mean, um, from Australia, from South America, as well as Italy and the UK, United States. Um, I don't know, to be honest, though, if the book resonates in Italy as much as it does outside of Italy. I don't know, Mario, what do you think about that? Isn't it more... 
So comments, goes it? it Sorry. The book Italy is out speaks more to people who live outside of Italy than to people who still live in Italy. Mm, eh, questa è una bella domanda. No, secondo me parla in qualche modo di entrambi. Eh, perché molte delle persone fotografate sono italiani che stanno giovanissimi, che stanno partendo negli ultimi anni, eh, quindi una immigrazione nuova che mh, eh, peraltro sono parecchi con eh, livelli di sociali, di istruzione diversissima, anche più elevati rispetto al passato, quindi un, un pezzo dell'Italia contemporanea che in questo momento continua a spostarsi all'estero. E, e alcuni di loro mh, fanno parte del libro perché tra le tre generazioni che io ho incluso la terza è quella proprio appunto dei, dei italiani, dei nuovi emigranti e, mh, peraltro il tema delle eh, migrazioni in Italia è un po' un tabù non se ne parli in maniera sostanziale e, mh, però c'è, c'è eh, ed è molto evidente quindi la risposta è sì, il libro sì, parla di tutte e due le Italie. Ehm, io mi volevo pure collegare un attimo, Viviana, a quello che diceva Eddie prima. Mari, Beh, prima un attimo che prima sì. uh, so, uh, Derek asked Mario if the, the book has equally resonated with the Italian audience and that also was kind of, uh, it was going to be a segue question to, uh, a question segment to that. And uh, so, uh, according to Mario, this book speaks uh, also to, you know, uh, you know, Italy uh, itself, because it does, the, the stories portrayed and the picture photographed there um, also, um, in, they, um, they cover the kind of the third group, the third generation that uh, of uh, people that left um, Italy uh, in the recent, uh, in this recent years. Uh, so it's the new, um, you know, migration outside Italy. People um, have different backgrounds. And uh, so it's the contemporary um, our, uh, Italy that is uh, moving out of Italy, going overseas. And, uh, you know, obviously, you know, often talking about migration in, in Italy, it's a little bit of taboo. And uh, so that was a, a um, so we should really um, take on this conversation. Um, Mario has an additional comment. Prego, Mario. Eh sì, mi volevo collegare a quello che diceva Eddie ed Eric riguardo la nostalgia, al ridefinire questo concetto e di quanto possa essere legato alle proprie origini, eh, non necessariamente allo stare lontani dall'Italia come paese. L'esempio reale, l'esempio sul quale mi sono imbattuto, è proprio quello dell'Argentina, eh, dove io ho incontrato quella che più o meno può essere la seconda generazione di italiani in Argentina, i cui padri nel no inizio del Novecento, la prima metà del Novecento, eh, avevano creato i circoli eh, degli italiani eh, in tutta la provincia di Buenos Aires. In realtà non erano circoli italiani, ma erano circoli regionali, eh, appunto il circolo dei Veneti, dei Siciliani, a volte addirittura legato a singoli paesi, quello dei Trevigiani, dei Palermitani e così via. Eh, questo spiega anche il posizionamento no? nei confronti della cultura italiana, che a volte insomma, è anche molto frammentato. E, mh, col passare di questi circoli fino agli anni 50, 60 e 70 erano il, il centro di tutta la socialità delle comunità italiane in quei luoghi e nel corso del tempo però con le nuove generazioni con eh, un ricambio demografico e sono stati in parte abbandonati perché i, i giovani ovviamente hanno una socialità diversa non gli importa più frequentare i circoli e, io ho visitato ad esempio quello dei Trevigiani che è un edificio molto bello in Senata e viene tenuto in vita dalla generazione di mezzo e quindi quella dei figli del, nati intorno agli anni 60 e 70 e che però gestiscono questo circolo che praticamente ormai è vuoto e non riescono a trovare il modo di coinvolgere altri italiani e nuove generazioni e loro hanno una forte nostalgia a, um, 
che non è appunto tanto legato all'Italia come paese, ma all'Italia che loro hanno conosciuto eh, da bambini eh, vivendo i circoli, quindi quelli Ita Italia con la cultura italiana conosciuta all'interno della comunità eh, in Argentina eh, e che, per adesso, che adesso non c'è più, quindi un, appunto una nostalgia legata più a, alla loro infanzia, al loro passato, alla storia della loro famiglia, più che a un'idea di paese, di nazione eh, lasciato e, e, e e questo crea anche un contatto appunto con, eh, con l'Italia e la cultura italiana in generale, però partendo appunto da quello che è stato il loro passato, insomma, che vedono come perduto. Italy and as, as a geographic entity with, that is there, <laughs> even if it's changing. And then the other Italys, and, and, and it has to do with the names. And I think it's really reconciling or finding the points of connections between uh, who the person is, the person left, uh, the person who was, the person who was born in Italy, the person who left, uh, and then the person who moves to another country or other countries and then has children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. I think there is a real rapture there. And this rapture um, is something I've thought about many times. And probably, Vianna, you experienced that going back, uh, you know, in two years after you left being called L'Americana. Mm -hmm. so we're the that... Italians here, we're the Americans there. <laughs> <laughs> that instant the acquisition of another identity and loss of an identity. Um, as as um, you know, in, um, in, in a couple of weeks, less than a couple of weeks, on October, October 11, the Triangle Fire Memorial uh, is been going to be inaugurated uh, in New York City. It's, it's an extraordinary event. And the name of the 146 uh, um, workers who died in the fire um, are going to be on this extraordinary memorial. About one third were were Italian, um, and there has been a kind of dispute uh, um, about the who, what are the real names. Um, there has been a lot of wonderful work uh, that Esther Rizzolicata, who is uh, who is uh, an Italian author, who has written this book. Uh, on uh, um, the Triangle Fire, which is a primary work of genealogical research. So she tracked down the birth certificates of, uh, of the workers. And you know, so her argument is that the names, the real names, the names to be used as a form of respect are the names that you find on the birth certificates. Mm -hmm. uh, but many of these immigrants uh, as they moved, especially the younger generation, they didn't want to be Giovanna, they wanted to be Jenny, okay? And I remember once in an interview that was asked about, about what immigration does to, to us and, and the expression that came to me that l'immigrazione ci ha stravolti tutti. Mm -hmm. And I don't think Italy has really come to terms uh, um, um, with the extent to which the journey of emigration and immigration completely transforms us. And that there is no pure, pristine Italian identity to, to be found anywhere or to be recovered. I mean, I doubt there is one in Italy, but when you talk specifically about the immigrants. And so holding on to the names, holding on to the language, the objects that we carry, all those things, I mean, they are really, I think, uh, symbolical gestures uh, to express this nostalgia as a recognition that all we have is absence. Mm -hmm. And this absence is counteracted by, you know, the, the solidity of the objects that we can touch or the sound of the name of the words that we can repeat. Uh, you know, I started speaking Sicilian uh, um, semi-fluently for the first time in my life. Um, I just wanted to uh, translate Mario's thoughts before, because uh, again, that ties into probably a challenge that a lot of uh, social groups 
uh, do experience here in uh, in the US. So uh, Mario was uh, uh, referring back to um, Eddie's redefinition of the idea of uh, nostalgia. And uh, he wanted, uh, he uh, talked about uh, the example of his visits in Argentina, where um, uh, he met uh, people that were probably second generation, whose fathers uh, um, um, were um, instrumental in the creation of Italian uh, enclaves, groups, uh, circoli, uh, social groups in uh, the entire Buenos Aires. And uh, additionally, these groups were also very regional. So you had the Venetians or the Sicilians and so forth, and sometimes even city like uh, the Palermitani or the Trevigiani and so forth. And that also sh uh, showed a little bit on how fragmented also that experience was um, was there. And uh, during uh, the 50s and the 60s, these uh, uh, centers where uh, these uh, uh, organizations were the center of the social life of the Italian uh, communities there. But uh, now uh, with the new generation, the uh, centers are, are being abandoned, just this idea of coming together the same way that our um, relatives or we as uh, uh, children uh, did. So now, you know, the, who is trying to patch things up and revive uh, the life in these centers are those who kind of were born in the 60s and, and the second uh, 70s who are managing these centers, but the centers have no life. They're kind of empty. Um, they, um, they're they unable, they're not finding ways, they're unable to um, attract um, the new generation and uh, uh, that socializes differently. They don't need to come together to a circolo to socialize. But uh, going back to the idea of nostalgia, the nostalgia is not really about the life in Italy, it's actually about the life that they experienced, their Italianità within these social centers. And that's what they're really, they're really missing, the memories of the families coming, uh, coming uh, together. And at that point, they wanted to create a link with uh, Italy and the Italian culture. And I do have to, uh, you know, the observation, which has already uh, been touched upon already a couple of times is, is Italy really paying attention? Is really Italy having those conversations um, about um, us living what's, what's our experience and so forth? We have here in the US a great interest of uh, people of Italian American uh, descent they want to become Italian citizens. So, um, but in Italy, are they talking about us also in the textbooks, or are they stopping that at chapter number twelve with this usual picture of, you know, the family of twelve with the suitcases? Oh, that's immigration. Punto. Mm. So. Um, and also sometimes Italy might do a disservice by wanting to box in the image of Italy, okay? Uh, oh, that is not authentic. Um, obviously, you know, I'm not going to go into any food conversations, but wanted to box in everyone's very authentic. My experience is authentic as you of uh, me preparing a dish um, and so uh, wanted to kind of point a finger. So it's like, oh, that's not authentic. Let's revolutionize the conversation, okay? Um, I, 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 I think even because how many Italians have really taken the time to travel throughout all the 20 regions and have spent an extensive period of time in every region to have learned the traditions, to understand that in Teramo, there are pasta la chitarra con le pallotte. Yes, here maybe they got bigger, those meatballs, or maybe became a staple, or maybe because there was actually a campaign that photographed meatballs on spaghetti, okay? But please, let's build a bridge among the conversations that are pointing fingers, and I think Italy sometimes does a disservice. Um, that's my personal opinion. So, anyone wants to chime in? 
<laughs> well, she said, well, that's the end of the conversation for today. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, what do you what do you think? Well, I think I told you what I think. <laughs> well, I think I, anyone else has a uh, you know uh, contributed. I, I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> um, because again, it, Italy is a fluid conversation, um, and uh, from both sides of uh, the uh, equation. So. Um, by having projects that document different experiences also that allows you um, say, oh, you had that experience of Italy or live in Italy mm. uh, at that time. And that's what Italy represents to you. Mine is equally authentic and real. It was different. I'm from Rome. Uh, I had these different colors. I had these different... Um, and um, so, as I said, if anyone wants to comment, because I'm going to share a uh, a picture, but uh... I just want to share how deeply say how deeply moving it was for me, just on a purely personal level, um, that Mario and Derek, not from the United States, but from Italy and from Scotland. Um, were expressing, pursuing, and building these amazing projects uh, um, that had to do with the experience uh, of being a different kind of Italian. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, in a way, um, there are not many spaces uh, to um, to express an experience. As I said at the beginning, for you know, I have to. Uh, acknowledge I'm no longer a recent immigrant <laughs> um, but like you I feel oh I just got here and there is someone um, who's asking so so what's your story what does it look like what mm -hmm. does it look like so that experience was profoundly moving and it really opened up uh, some possibilities for me for reflection and as it did uh, I'm sure for all the other people who were involved in the project um you know, obviously, you know, I always have, uh, uh, you know, it's always easier for me to ask, but if this book were to be translated in Italian, I think it will do a great service to Italy as well and to the Italians that um, want to read about these stories. Some of them might even realize that they have a relative that had left, maybe the relative stayed overseas, or maybe the, the relative has returned and they might have a newly regenerated curiosity to ask questions because sometimes um, that's what is not happening nowadays. Um, we're not, we're, maybe we're not asking as many questions. Um, we're not investigating. And uh, so um, unfortunately, you know, once too much time has passed, there is not going to be anyone uh, answering those questions. So now you are looking at a picture, okay? Uh, this was a recent gathering of a group of Italian women that I belong to, Don Italiani di Pittsburgh. And uh, so we just had our kickoff meeting uh, for uh, for the year. This was just a couple of weeks ago. And the uh, ironically, the theme that I had proposed was about immigration with the different, the many different shades and I don't know, obviously we look different, you never met us. But can you guess what was the title of the first gathering that I proposed? <laughs> Italy's out. Yeah. So um, it was actually new, uh, but I did ask, this time I asked um, to bring one object, um, just because there was quite a few of us. And uh, because I realized that within the group, we actually had all the three different groups that we were talking about. The ones that um, uh, maybe migrated or were very close to uh, the self-made, you know, kind of the symbol, the stereotype of the immigrant. We have the ones that were the children who um, don't speak the language. Um, and it was interesting to see what was their experience of Italy, their um, and then um, the the third generation, the ones that uh, have come to the U.S. And um, so again, I thought would they bring a lot of uh, food, kitchen related items? And um, 
so I just wanted to, if you allow me, but uh, I, you know, this was uh, a little snapshot, but we had one lady talking about the Corredo de Trousseau um, that she actually found after her mom passed away. So again, wanted to ask questions, but no one to ask them to. Um, it was a beautifully uh, embroidery. So I shared, I shared also a little bit about uh, uh, Lucy's project. So that allowed me to. Um, then these are two different individuals, uh, but it was not just the item. In this case, uh, was uh, represented the inability to ask questions. In the other one was um, is a, the third generation, and uh, she brought this uh, this cake pan um, that belonged to uh, grandmother. But uh, it was all her mom. I said, you know, just you know, bring something to the U.S. And she just didn't, uh, you know, uh, think too much of it until it became her favorite. She's a great cook, um, but. Um, that was her, uh, it was probably the only thing that she brought from Italy because it was a new life. She wanted new furniture, new everything, but it was almost like a, a big connection. The other one was another lady. Um, these are just spoons, everyday spoons that uh, she and her sister um, used when mom was still alive. And uh, it just one day she returned back to Matera. So we had Abruzzo, we had Liguria, we had Basilicata. Mom was already passed and uh, they were just eating soup. And all of a sudden, you know, the emotions remembering her mom came about. So the spoons, there were eight of them. So sister kept four and she brought four in the US and she uses them every day. She wants that memory, that presence to be in her life every single day. Um, then we have Abruzzo again with a, a necklace, the Presentosa. For those of you who are from Abruzzo, the Presentosa is a beautiful uh, pendant that typically, um, I think the in-laws buy to the bride-to-be. And uh, the one that she had on the other hand was from her husband. So it was a contemporary, so it was a, an old symbol, but a contemporary love because they just celebrated whatever anniversary's number, I don't remember. Uh, and then actually these were my two objects. Um, so, um, because one represents my, um, uh, a nickname, um, that associates, uh, it's the sound of this little squeaky toy is Quincon. So my brother would call me Quincon. It has nothing to do with my name, but is the most private, I think, layer of me, someone knowing me by my nickname. Um, and uh, the other one is a pendant that belongs to my mom. Um, my parents were, uh, my mom was uh, from Puglia, um, but I found an exact copy in Sardinia at a museum, exact. And now I have to figure out, we don't have any Sardinian relatives that I know of. And uh, it's just going to put me on a quest. Um, but just to conclude, because I know that I'm going on a long monologue here, each of the items again here was change. The other one was accomplishment. The other one was building a new life. All of them um, had a very, it was probably the most emotional, deepest connection type of meeting that we ever had. There were not dry eyes at the end of it. And I think that was, uh, um, thanks to your project. So, so that's uh, something that I want to share. Um, any final thoughts, something about the project, the book, upcoming events, anything that you would like to share as we go into closing? <clears throat> Abbiamo già svolto un giro di presentazioni del libro, e, insomma, speriamo di poterne farne altre e organizzarne altre ulteriori nei prossimi mesi e per il prossimo anno. Mm -hmm. e... um, where are you going? Uh, uh, so there's going to be upcoming uh, book tours. Um, <laughs> dove are you coming to the US at all? <laughs> e, sì, speriamo io 
penso ad aprile di venire negli Stati Uniti e quindi potrebbe essere un'occasione magari per organizzare qualche presentazione in presenza. E, insomma, ne sarei lieto. Ok, so we'll, you definitely have an invitation to come as at uh, Istituto Mondo Italiano. So uh, Mario uh, might be in the US in April of next year, so that might be a good opportunity to actually organize something in person. Derek, how about you? Uh, comments, news, uh, final thoughts? I, I have to say, yes, I'm really pleased that you shared what you've done with your book. I mean, it is so amazing and so humbling to see that the book has that had that kind of afterlife and that kind of effect far beyond the, the, the circle of readers that we might have imagined. I still use the book with my students, which is a really important resource for um, students to kind of emotionally identify with with Italians who are abroad with different stories and, and, and encourages them to think about themselves. I mean, obviously not very many of them have an Italian uh, heritage, but they do have heritages. And I think the methodology that Mario has put into place in the book allows people to kind of like touch something about their family life, about where they came from, but particularly about what that means, how to build a bridge between now and, and, and multiple paths, which is really moving, it's really powerful. Thank you, thank you, Derek. And uh, Eddie? Well, I think one of the things also that I want to emphasize uh, that as much as Italy is at the center of this book, uh, this is a book uh, that speaks uh, to anyone uh, who has had any kind of experience of emigration, immigration, either in the first person or in uh, in their family? It's a book. Of, it's a book about it's about emigration. It's about it's a book about also about memory, about memory work. It's about a book how we understand ourselves across generation. It's an also um, an education in uh, in understanding the significance of objects as a repository of memories. It's so. The images are absolutely beautiful. Um, it complements image and story. And um, I, I'm honored to be part of this project. And um, it's a wonderful, wonderful book for, for, for anybody to read, uh, even if you are not Italian. Absolutely, absolutely. E io well, voglio aggiungere una cosa, Viviana, innanzitutto no, complimenti, mi associo a Derek per quello che avete fatto a Pittsburgh, ed è bellissimo poi vedere il potere no, de, dei lavori artistici, della fotografia, mm -hmm. che poi creano connessioni, innescano meccanismi che non ti aspetti. L'altra cosa riguardo il libro oh, è che forse la forza del libro è il fatto che anche se sono storie di vita diversissime, ra racconto una storia comune, chiunque legga e sfogli il libro alla fine vede eh, un pezzo della propria storia, anche se non è, è, è migrante, non ha lasciato l'Italia, quindi ci sono delle chiavi interpretative che spingono poi il lettore a vedere un pezzo e riflettere sulla propria vita. Um, I totally agree. So, uh, well, thank you for the compliments about uh, what we have done in Pittsburgh. So, um, again, the, the one thing that I wanted to add, I don't think we had really ever consciously thought about our immigration experience before. Okay, we just take it for granted. And uh, um, either you know that you're an immigrant or maybe you're a professional living overseas, that really put us in that mind, we became aware um, in many different layers. Um, so as far as they, uh, what Mario was saying is that the strength of the book is that although there are many different um, uh, types of experiences uh, featured in the book, there is a common story. Um, and um, people can exercise different uh, interpretations and looking at a story and, re and reflect and take it in their own uh, in their own uh, way. Um, Eddie, <laughs> when are we going to see each other in person? 
Uh, you know, Pittsburgh <laughs> is such a wonderful uh, community. Um, so I hope uh, the opportunity will uh, will come very soon. Absolutely. Okay. Well, unfortunately, our our together is up. Il Big Bang ha detto stop. It's time for us to say arrivederci e alla prossima. We want to thank you for tuning in into the program. If you have any questions or comments, or if you have any topics you would like us to address, please contact us at the Italian Radio Hour at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you. Remember, if you or any of your family and friends have missed a prior episode or would like to listen to this episode again, please visit our website at www.istitutomondoitaliano.org and click on the Italian Radio Hour tab. You can also subscribe to the Italian Radio Hour on YouTube, where you catch your favorite podcasts. I would like to profusely thank my guests, starting with Mario Badagliacca, Derek Duncan, and Eddie Giunta. Uh, our sponsor, Istituto Mondo Italiano. And until next time, alla prossima. Ciao, ciao. Ciao. Thank you, Serviana. Ciao, ciao.